Hello everyone. My name is Lea Latzel from Nasdaq Tallinn and I welcome you to Balticus Group's webinar. Today we are hosted by the chairman of the management board, Melis Milder, and the member of the management board, Maigi Bernik Bernik, who will introduce the financial results and company's activities of the second quarter of year 2018. Right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. If you would like to use the opportunity to ask questions from Mike and Melis, use the question box on the right side of the screen to send in questions. All questions will be answered after the presentation. However, you can send in questions during the presentation. Melis and Mikey, I invite you to start the presentation. Um, hello to everybody. I'm uh, Melis Milder, CEO of Baltic Group. Uh, really pleased to have the, another webinar commenting our results and also happy to have such a great and big audience. Well, we all know it's, it's a great summer right now, but, uh, but anyway, we are, we are pleased to have you with us today. So we go by the, by the slides. Perhaps uh, me and Mikey will, will add some comments if, if that's, uh, we feel necessary. Uh, and like already said, very open to the, to the, to the questions after the official end of the, of the presentation. So I start with two slides talking about uh, us in general. We're celebrating 90 years of existence uh, this year. Uh, gone through many, many times and, 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 and challenges and, and, and changes. And also currently are in, a, in, a, in the middle of something we'd, we'd like to offer to investors uh, but especially to the customers for the, for the coming years. But uh, generally our business model so far hasn't changed. Uh, we run pretty much vertical uh, business model, which means uh, we, we have the own design team in-house. In All the collections are, are created by our own, own people. Uh, we have the brands. Uh, we have a pretty big part of the production also belonging to the, to the value chain two factories in, in Estonia. At the same time, uh, quite a large uh, buy-in uh, from many, many countries uh, from the world. Uh, we run uh, four sales channels, still uh, retail in our home markets, which are uh, Baltic uh, republics uh, playing the, the major role, uh, close to 90%, uh, online growing and, and other channels also looking their way to, to perform better and grow. But generally, sales to plus 30 countries, mostly due to e-commerce. Uh, we export uh, the, the products we, we create uh, more than 60%. Our retail network consists of uh, 122 <coughs> brand stores in nine countries, including 29 franchise stores <coughs> Sorry, uh, we wholesale to European Union and, and uh, CIS countries. E-shop uh, and more fashion com delivers to 44 countries and uh, last year revenue was close to 48 million euros. Uh, we have uh, currently five fashion brands, uh, Mosaic, Monton, Ivan Nicola, Batman and, and Bastion. And uh, with these five brands, we, we try to try to segment the markets, uh, the small markets we're operating uh, as, as wisely as, as, as possible, uh, approaching different customers and selling them different different brand products. And uh, now I go to uh, Q2 highlights. Uh, first of all, on uh, May 16th, we had uh, annual general meeting. Uh, all the all the results of the meeting are available in, in internet, but uh, uh, just uh, mentioning again, we approved, uh, or shareholders approved annual report for 2017 and profit allocation. Uh, we reduced the share capital to cover prior period losses in a simplified way. Uh, we made uh, amendments to the articles of association uh, the new uh, manager share option program 
and uh, related to that conditional increase of the share capital uh, were uh, accepted by the investors and shareholders. And also we extended the term of authorities, of authorities, of members of the Supervisory Council. Uh, they are Jako Salmelin, Lauri, Aima, Vaida Kolm, Tina Mays and Ren Sachs. Pretty much the same, same team as has been managing the, the company or supervising the company for, for, for the last years, for another three years. <clears throat> and also in, in a Q time, Q2, uh, in May specifically, uh, the order of uh, the Estonian Olympic Committee uh, was given uh, to CEO, but, uh, but pretty much it was a, a sign of the highest recognition to Baltica, which uh, the company was recognized for the contribution to the development of Stern Olympic and uh, sporting movements. And uh, perhaps, as you already know, Baltica has been a supporter and uh, the delegation, Olympic delegation collection developer since uh, 2004 already. Um, Q2 and then six months uh, results be before I, I give over to, to Maigi. Uh, just referring to all of the second year, we, we present in, in our annual report our targets for the year in three main objective uh, groups, uh, which are successful company, motivated employee, and content, cost, content customer. Uh, we believe that the structure helps yeah, also the, the shareholders and investors and anal analytics also just to perhaps get better picture of uh, what we're aiming for and uh, what are the specific uh, initiatives for the specific year. So we continue with this and uh, the successful company objective for this year it is, it is, it is, it has to be stated that uh, we are right now in a process of uh, creating foundations for the, what we call strategy 2022 to, to it, to succeed. And therefore developing digital toolkits for inventory management and product development, uh, promoting uh, new supply markets and uh, optimizing uh, shop network in politics, uh, among other very important, uh, Initiatives uh, we are right now carrying on uh, more of understanding the, the basic idea of this strategy 2022. You could read in uh, in my comments in annual report for the for the last year, and uh, also we would say that uh, in in the second uh, half of this year, perhaps also more specific comments will will follow also through the quarter reports and, and webinars. Motivated employee as, a, as an important part of the, the making a successful company. Uh, but perhaps a bit more about uh, the, the third uh, objective for the year, objective group for the year, which is content customer. Whether the objectives uh, have been increased sales revenue in all sales channels Increase sales in, in Finnish market, which is, uh, is is selected as our new focus market for the for the years to come. Develop new online, offline, multi-brand uh, concept, which is absolutely new approach to the future business lines, and uh, find at least two new trade partners. So uh, interim uh, results are Baltic retail results were comparable to the last year level which we see as, as, as a, well, let's say, relatively positive result as uh, the Q1 was, uh, for all Baltic fashion retail, quite a disastrous. Uh, we see some sales conversion to e-store, also in our home markets. Then e-com growth has been a bit slowed down, but uh, we see it as partly reason for cross-profit margin development in a way that uh, We've been selling less uh, discounted products from the from previous seasons and uh, more with a higher margin uh, current uh, season stock. So cross profit has, has improving due to that uh, noticeably. 
Uh, wholesale and fences growth was negative, uh, mainly due to the unstable economic situation in Ukraine and Russia. We, we had to react to, to that. Uh, and again, that's mostly mainly related to the fences partner sales we, we, we are working with in those markets. Uh, groups uh, net profit was hit, if, if I use that word, by the Finnish market entering costs, which in my understanding are the good news in big frames. And a bit lost of cross profit uh, due to the Eastern Francis markets uh, lower sales as already mentioned. And now I give over to Maggie. Maggie, please. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, good morning from my side as well. I'm Maggie Berni, board member of Baltica. And I um, try to explain um, shortly the main revenue lines developments and uh, the um, performance indicators uh, for the group. So sales or revenue, uh, group revenue in quarter two decreased 6% and it was 11 million euros. And Melis slightly already covered it that the decrease mainly was due to fall in wholesale and franchise sales. Our biggest sales segment, retail revenue, was uh, almost at the same level, slight decrease there, and e-com sales was plus two. So, and now a little bit more detailed uh, way, um, or detailed uh, overview about the biggest uh, sales segment, retail. As you see from the chart uh, uh, upper left, uh, the sales um, by month has been actually at the same level as uh, last year, as 2016. There are two months where we could say that it was uh, really um, uh, not so good for us this year. These are February and June. Uh, but uh, talking about quarter two, uh, yes, June was, uh, wasn't as we expected and wasn't good, but in April and especially in May, the sales were, were really strong. And um, despite that there was small uh, uh, decline in sales, our cross profit margin improved in all markets and the quarter to two GP was at the last year level in all of our retail markets. And that was actually uh, good uh, results for us. And a uh, good GP level was achieved due to mainly two key elements, uh, stronger collections and increased share of full price sales. Uh, about brands, the brand with the biggest share continues to be Monton which revenues um, formed 42% uh, uh, of retail sales, and it is followed quite tightly by, by Mosaic. Now, e-com. E-com uh, revenue increased 2%. If we actually look again at the chart and, um, and, uh, and our previous uh, month, quarters and years, then the e-com sales has shown good, quite rapid growth rates during the last four or five years. And this second quarter uh, sales um, was quite modest compared to the previous sales growth. But it's mainly related to the significantly lower offering of the discounted products. And um, as the customers were buying uh, new seasons good, uh, the cross profit was actually continuously uh, good. Uh, our, uh, despite the small uh, small growth in sales, our cross profit grew 12 percent. And um, and uh, looking at the pies and uh, the brands and uh, and markets, then uh, biggest brand in ecom was in quarter two mosaic. If I'm not wrong, then it's the first time actually when mosaic is the biggest. Uh, it has been Monton, but Monton is actually very close, uh, closely following uh, the mosaic uh, in, in quarter two as well. And still, the Estonia has the biggest uh, uh, share in sales um, in quarter two, 58%, followed by Latvia, Lithuania. 
Okay, wholesale and franchise. Franchise. As um, Mel is told, and uh, we have seen uh, in, uh, at the previous slide, the wholesale and franchise revenue decreased, and this is actually the main reason for the for the lower sales in uh, quarter two and uh, uh, in the first half of this year. And uh, the main reason for the decline in the second quarter uh, was um, was unstable economic environment and weak sales results in Russia and Ukraine. And this is the reason why uh, the shipment to our partners in uh, that region has been reduced uh, by Baltica, by ourselves. And maybe one good uh, news here is that in July, uh, the contract for entering Slovenian and Croatian market uh, was signed um, with um, retail company Monte Cristo. And the first shipment uh, for for the three department stores uh, uh, of Monte Cristo in in different cities uh, or towns is planned for August. Now the key figures of the group: um, uh, revenue was down by six percent, but uh, if you look at the gross profit, uh, then the total gross profit uh, basically was at the same level, even slight decrease compared to last year. Uh, sorry, yes, no, no, it, it's, it has slightly increased compared to last year. So with a good GP and 2% higher OPEX, um, which is mainly due to the uh, entering uh, the Finnish retail market, Baltica ended quarter two with a profit in amount of 127 euros, which is some seven hmm? uh, 127,000 euros, which is some 70,000 less than last year. So, but we are now ready for the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, now Trino will proceed with the questions. I would like to remind you that you can send in questions using the question box on the right side of the screen. All right, we will start answering the questions now. Uh, I will first uh, tell out two questions that we got because it's on the same, uh, very similar topic, so I'll read them out. Uh, were your Russian sales affected much by the recent wake, uh, weakening of uh, ruble in quarter two? And the second one was what kind of problems exactly your CIS partner is facing at the moment? So I'll give word to my again. <laughs> yes, thank you for the questions, for the interest, first of all. And yes, Russia and Ukraine mainly. Um, talking about Russia and Ukraine, we slightly covered the topic in the, um, in the first quarter reports as well. And uh, just to generalize, then uh, uh, first four months this year in Ukraine and Russia was, uh, I would say, dramatic uh, a fall in demand and in sales numbers. Uh, in local currency, the currency effect, uh, there is no currency effect on that to uh, what I'm talking at the moment. Uh, it, it wasn't uh, only our partners or our shops, as we understand, uh, all shopping centers and, uh, uh, and other fashion sector uh, companies were actually suffering as well. There are several theories I am not actually the expert to, to maybe explain or, uh, or talk about what exactly are the reasons. But, uh, but, uh, but, this, uh, but this actually is for us the fact that uh, from January to April, the loss was remarkable. Uh, loss sales. Loss, uh, uh, yeah, and in demand in general. What is... Um, Positive slightly for us is that in May and especially in June, the results uh, has recovered. And uh, for example, in Ukraine, the like for like sales has been even the same in June, what is quite good result because uh, the prior fall was almost 40%. 
the but it's only so far some one two months and we still are very cautious here we uh, we monitor uh, tightly the the payments to us and how much uh, or how big sorry deliveries or shipments we are making uh, we would like to see uh, uh, the trends uh, uh, for a longer period the positive trends Talking about uh, currency risk, then uh, we don't have the currency risk. We are selling to the partners in euros. And, uh, and the second, uh, I, I would just say that uh, in the la latest month of the first half, the payment to us has increased actually, and it's related to the better sales and, uh, and FX is, hasn't been so big problem so far. And then on to the next question. So you mentioned that the profit was affected by entering Finnish market in the first half year of 2018. Uh, how big were these extraordinary expenses? Well, I believe we could actually say that, that uh, during the first half, uh, the expenses uh, for the entry to Finnish market has been around uh, 70,000 euros. And on to next question. Uh, what volumes do you expect to sell uh, to Monte Cristo in coming years? It's a good question. So talking about Monte Cristo, then um, at the moment we have a partner which is a big partner and um, and well-known uh, partner in uh, in that region they have uh, have interest toward us and uh, uh, we agreed to start to test it's actually test from both sides uh, uh, and we are opening the or let's say they are selling our brand monton in three uh, department stores the volumes are not big, and I'm not going to, uh, to say that, uh, I don't know, the expectation in the near future are extraordinary. We start and we test, which is good is that the partner is, seems to be very interested in and we are interested in. And uh, uh, apart from that, um, we are testing the new model where we see uh, the future. Uh, today, uh, the wholesale um, partner business model is, uh, uh, I would say, very traditional and um, not maybe uh, uh, surviving the turbulent uh, times and, uh, and to see the problems department store having in, in our sector. And, and this uh, new model uh, should be more toward win-win situation. We are basically selling the concession-based uh, um, based model and our partner and we are both interested on testing, uh, testing uh, that, how that model uh, works. And it is a basis for the mutual, uh, I don't know, profit and increased uh, volumes for the future. Uh, the Monte Cristo, actually have uh, over 100,000, oh, so sorry, over 100 <laughs> uh, uh, selling points. There is a department store, there is a, a standalone separate brand, mono brand uh, and multi-brand uh, shops. We, we start our, our test with uh, department stores. Now this was it. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> one uh, question came in. Uh, in your view, what is the reason for such a slowdown in e-com sales in quarter two? Yeah, we, we tried to explain that. To that. Um, if, you, if you look at the GP, the profit we are earning, then there is no, uh, in B-frames, there is no slowdown in numbers. But, uh, but yes, sales is uh, increasing only two percent and the main reason is uh, uh, our offering to the uh, uh, customers using e-channels we used to have uh, more discounted items fro from the previous collection and at the moment we are actually uh, have i don't know i would say that solved the uh, problem with uh, stock management and we just don't have so many uh, uh, discounted items anymore and we are selling we are offering and we are selling more full-time products. 
and um, and this is why whether that could or not uh, this you know, ca can remain as a question mark uh, this is a, a tactical way and maybe even strategical way how you are actually build your uh, e-com uh, e-channel customers what kind of customer segment you are targeting etc but today uh, we are quite we are actually pleased <coughs> with the final result which is profit or gp cross profit uh, from the e-channel uh, thank you. So this uh, was it. All the questions uh, we have been re reading out. Uh, so we will uh, conclude. Thank you all for listening. And uh, uh, next time. Yes. The presentation will be available on Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel on webinar playlist. Uh, thank you, Trinu, and thank you, Melis and Mikey, for the presentation and for the answers. And thank you, participants, for joining. Thank you. Thank you.